Hey everyone, hey, uh, check it out. I am a little bit under the weather, not feeling real good, uh, but there's a couple things I just wanted to talk about. And um, so I'm not gonna do a regular live broadcast today. I had John Prescott from Australia was gonna join me uh, prayerfully. I'll be doing much better by tomorrow. And Wednesday, John's gonna join me. Uh, but Paul wrote in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse six, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one, and here it is, is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception, among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they may all be condemned who did not believe in the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Folks, there's so many different things that are happening I would have loved to have talked about today with the guests, but as I mentioned, John, uh, on Wednesday, and then I uh, am uh, scheduled Joe Kurd tomorrow. Appreciate your prayers, but we're dealing with chat GPT. It, more and more is just coming to light about it and the ability of deception with chat GPT. Uh, there's also the whole Russia Nord Stream 2 incident. Monkey reported on that way back when it first happened. It got picked up through regular press just over the last week or so. So it's got some legs and Russia is saying, hey, we're going to start investigating. Did the Biden administration blow that up? So the whole Russia, Ukraine situation is just continuing to increase. Uh, think of it in regards to um, uh, just the, the reality that this thing could go nuclear. Listen, the whole world's not going to be destroyed. We know that. We know that the book of Revelation is going to be fulfilled, just as it says. But there could be small nuclear exchanges that would be absolutely devastating. And the Bible seems to allude to things like that when you look at just a couple of different passages. So there's so many threats. World War III, of course, China. We're watching earthquakes. Again, there are more of them. Uh, we think of what Jesus said with earthquakes, uh, thinking uh, there's going to be earthquakes in various places, and they're going to increase, like birth pains upon a pregnant woman. Uh, then, we, of course, we have the train wreck in Ohio, uh, some are calling that America's Chernobyl. Listen, this is bad news. Amongst other train wrecks, apparently, that have happened, I'm still trying to get more information on them. What in the world is really going on? Food plants are being destroyed. I saw another one in Florida. You're looking at this going, uh, there's something very suspicious that's going on. As one of my friends said just the other day, if after the last three years, you don't think anything suspicious is happening, then something is wrong with your brain. Uh, there's definitely strange things that are taking place. And of course, the UFO thing, listen, those weren't UFOs, those balloons or whatever it was, the military shot down. I did my the video on that last week, but it does make you very suspicious about this Project Blue Beam, uh, uh, this NASA project. So looking at that going, all right, what in the world's really happening? Well, there's such deception, such lawlessness is taking place. The strong delusion that God speaks of that I just read, that's going to be fulfilled in the tribulation period. But there's all these different line wonders that are taking place. And then, of course, March 1, coming up, is the Abrahamic family going to meet as the world religions are uniting. Man, we live in interesting days. Uh, but one more thing I want to address is also the Asbury revival. I keep getting asked questions on it. I don't know. I haven't visited. I haven't read enough about it yet. But the, the, just from my observation, a revival is going to be, uh, you're really going to know if it's a revival after the fact, after some time has gone by. Uh, revival is going to involve the Word of God and repentance and changed lives. Uh, and maybe that's going on. So I can't say it's not happening, uh, but the proof is in the pudding. The proof will be here a year, two years from now. What's really going on? You hear other things like that are being mentioned right now. But when I look at this, to me, from the outside looking in, it looks like a worship service, prayer meeting uh, that's been going on. And, and 
And I, you know, looking, let me put it into a, a, an understanding that maybe all of us can grasp. When COVID hit, uh, all kinds of churches closed down. They shut their doors at least. And what happened was you had pockets of churches that stayed open. Ours was one of them. Jack Hibbs in Southern California. Tim Thompson was one of them. Uh, some of the churches uh, stayed open. Bob out here in the area that I live in. And the churches that stayed open have experienced people from the closed churches come to them. So when you look at a lot of the churches that stayed open, uh, they were growing in numbers uh, tremendously. Well, why? Well, there were people from other churches that were saying, hey, I want to go to church somewhere. And this church is staying open. And I believe that's the way it should be. So it's not so much that there's necessarily a revival taking place. But other people were looking for a place to go to church. And so when I look at this with Asbury, I, I don't know. Um, there's not a lot of great worship services that are going on. There's not a lot of prayer meetings that are going on. And this may be a genuine revival. I don't know. The proof will be in repentance uh, somewhere down the road. But I look at it, and and if it is a revival that's taking place in America, it certainly isn't in numbers uh, like more people, if there is some type of revival taking place, and what it is, it's the people who are genuine believers are more on fire for the Lord than they've ever been before. So it's not about a growing numerically more people, um, more people be, uh, coming to Christ like you see in Iran or China and these threats where people are threatened uh, in their relationship with Christ where there is a genuine uh, movement of the Lord taking place. But it appears to me what's happening in the Western world is people who are believers are being revived, but there really needs to be an awakening because quite frankly, uh, the church in America is, it, it appears rather dead. Uh, like you start looking at the seven different churches in the book of Revelation and you see the different characteristics, the compromised church, the lukewarm church, uh, the dead church. And you look at that and you go, it seems to describe a lot of what we see. But hey, praise God if people are genuinely repenting and surrendering their life to the Lord and lives are being changed in, in Asbury. But overall, uh, the proof is in the pudding and, and uh, um, looking forward to seeing what comes in the future. In the meantime, look, I, I plan on being much better by tomorrow and Wednesday being live with you all again. Uh, so in the meantime, uh, God bless.